To the final whistle, then it's been a while, hasn't it? Uh, we've had a bit, we've had a bit of a break. Um, we have put stuff on the YouTube shorts and that though, but we are back for the business end of the championship season. Then um, many games to go in the race for promotion, the race for staying up in the championship, and of course, the race for the playoffs. And uh yeah, welcome to the championship predictions as we go through all the predictions for game week 39. And um, yeah, what an interesting show we've got for this one then. Um, guys, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the stream, then please hit the like button. Um, let's have a look who's in the chat then. Uh, Kyle, how are you? Ryan, how are you, my friend? Um, Callum's in, how are you, Callum? Um, hi, Eddie, how are you, my friend? Uh, guys, as always, get your predictions in when we go through each game, then be sure to get your predictions in. Uh, we're going to go through every single game in the championship, and uh, yeah, we're going to predict them. Um, I'm going to be joined by guest football Martin. Martin, how are you, my friend? Jack, I'm good, mate. How are you, mate? I'm very good. Martin, have you enjoyed the international break, mate? Well, I've not enjoyed it at all. I've not enjoyed it at all. Not in the slightest have I enjoyed the international break. I just thought that I didn't enjoy the England England games. Neither of them, I didn't think, were great, to be honest. Um, he didn't really learn a great deal, neither did he Southgate, I don't think. Um, other than if we haven't got Kane and, and Bellingham, we'd have a few issues, I would think. But no, I didn't really enjoy it at all. Um, just glad to get club football back and like you just said at the top of the show but the business end of the season now aren't we mate where it's uh it's hotting up in the championship at the top and the bottom it's going to be a thrilling end to the season yeah southampton are the only team now who's got what 10 games left obviously two games in hand on mm. the other team some have got eight games some have got nine some have got 10 i mean uh martin i mean let's go through the Week 38 of the predictions before the international break. Coventry mm. Hall, Leicester and Southampton didn't play respectively. Um, Swansea and Cardiff in the South Wales derby. Swansea picking up a big three points over their uh, South Wales um, compatriots, Martin, should we call it? Yeah, it's... Um... It was a funny one, wasn't it, before the international break with not everyone playing because the FA Cup, you know, Leicester were down at Chelsea and, um, yeah, they, obviously, they, you know, not everyone was in action, so it makes it a bit uneven. And it was a bit of a, I thought it was a bit of a dab weekend, really, that, that last weekend of the championship. Um, before the international break, QPR, they they picked up a, another point um, towards safety. You know, they're, they're well on their way now. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't, uh, the, the, I guess the biggest one was, was Sheffield Wednesday wasn't it, like you said uh, against Ipswich. That was a massive result for for Ipswich. That one um, they bounced back after that Cardiff Cardiff defeat big time, didn't they? Yeah, Ipswich winning six goals to nil. I mean, who'd have expected that one? If you're a Sheffield Wednesday fan going to Portman Road to watch your team, mm. I mean, you didn't you wouldn't think it had ended in that fashion. I mean, Ipswich came back with a vengeance, didn't they, Martin? After losing to Cardiff uh, the week yeah. before. Uh, Birmingham City still remain in that rot of not winning games. Watford um, going to St Andrews for the international break and picking up a win under the new head coach, Tom Cleverley, for the time mm. being. Um, Middlesbrough and Blackburn did share the spoils, didn't they, Martin, in a draw. Plymouth losing to Preston. Preston, again, a really good form at the minute. Uh, Ryan Lowe's side. Um Rotherham in Huddersfield ended up a draw. Um, Norwich, I mean, they're, they're real informed side at the minute, aren't they, Martin? They went to Stoke yeah. and won quite convincingly, to be honest. And uh, yeah, seemed to have scored quite a lot of goals in the last few games, Norwich City. 
<coughs> no, excuse me. Yeah, they're in very good form. Well in the playoffs now, aren't they? They're right in the mix for it. And uh, yeah, <coughs> it's a big weekend for them, mate, as well. Massive weekend for them. Just need to get, keep getting the wins on the board. And they're very, like we were saying just before we come on the live, uh, their form at, at home is very, very good, Jack, isn't it? Mm. Very good. Um, Sunderland and QPR ended up and ended up a draw. Um, West Brom ended up beating Bristol City, and then Leeds United moved top of the league um, on goal difference after they beat Millwall <coughs> two goals to nil. Yeah, Leeds are they've been in some unbelievable form, haven't they? Since the the turn of the year, you know they've only let three goals in, and yeah, they they, they look to be free scoring, but you know they're just not letting goals in, and, and I think that's how you win leagues, isn't it? By by not letting goals in, but scoring goals, and yeah, they've they've got a tough game over this this Easter period. They they have to go down to Watford. Tom Cleverley's gone in there as manager, like you just said, and you know he's got them going. He stopped the rot there after Ismail went, and you, you never know, do you? It's not an easy place to go and play. You know, we've been there, Southampton. It wasn't an easy place to go, Watford, and and obviously they got a really big game on Easter Monday. I think all all the promotion sides have big games. They have to play whole City on Easter Monday at, at, at home, but still, uh, you know, it's another tough game, Jack, and the games come, come thick and fast. They come thick and fast now, and it's going to, it's going to be really interesting to see who finishes on top here. Let me share my screen. Let's have a look at the, um, let's have a look at the table, Martin. I mean, uh, before mm. we go into week 39 of the predictions, um, yeah. let me get it up. Here's the table. Right, here we are. We, we've moved to the side to allow the table to take the whole of the room, Martin. Um, like it, Leeds, yeah. United, Leeds United top, then 82 points. Obviously, a goal mm. difference ahead of Leicester. Played one more game than Leicester, who obviously played mm. Chelsea in the FA Cup. Ipswich moved within one point of both Leeds and Leicester. Uh, yeah. Southampton, two games in hand, 73 points, eight points behind. Um, the respective Ipswich... Uh, but nine points beyond the top two. I mean, then you look at West Brom, Martin, 66 points. I mean, surely West Brom have got to um, have that sort of inkling now to say, you know what, we are in a real strong position for the playoffs. I mean, what do you make of the top six? Is it six at the minute? God, it's. Uh, I think that the top three, are, you know, there's a lot of Southampton fans in the chat because I can see them because I'm sharing this on my YouTube as well. So, mm. uh, you know, that a few of them are going to be pretty, they're pretty, pretty, pretty peeved with me right now. But, but I, I, I don't, I'm not sure you can include us within that automatic promotion pack at the moment. I just think we're going to have to go some Southampton to, to get in those automatic promotion places. I think it's between Ips, it's which and Leicester and Leeds for those top two spots. Um, and that's no disrespect to us. I just think that we would have to go on some extraordinary uh, run. Run now. There's ten games. We've got to play what nine games in 29 days. It's a massive ask for us to really put ourselves in contention. Anything's possible, but I really think it'd be between uh, those three. It'd be interesting. I think if you can get the if Leicester can beat Southampton in a couple of weeks' time, yeah, I think they could potentially then go on and win the division. I think. That's the that's the really big game. They can bounce back after this, after this uh, international break with, and, and not wobble because it's been a bit of a wobble. You'd admit there's been a bit of a wobble. If they can settle things down really, really quickly and start getting results on the board over this Easter, you wouldn't put it past Leicester to go on and win win the division. But Leeds Leeds won't go away. We know that they're they're so good at the back. Uh, they score goals and they've got they they got the most experienced manager out, out of those chase at, the, at those chasing sides you know Southampton Ipswich and Leicester you've got to say that Daniel Fark is more experienced than all of them so I just think that he gives them the edge in my opinion at, at this moment in time then you look at the player spots will Hull do it they're drawing too many games but I think it's between Coventry Hull and Norwich who gets that final that sixth place I think it'd be Norwich that's my gut feeling at the moment they, they've got the form at this mm. moment in time, their home form, like you said, is really, really good. Um, they stuck with their manager when they, you know, David Wagner, when they could have probably fired him earlier on in the season, but they didn't. They stuck with him and fair play to them. They're right in the mix. Yeah, I think um, goal difference helps quite a lot, doesn't it, Martin, when you look at the table? Um, mm. I mean, Norwich have got a better goal difference than Hull. I mean, Coventry, mm. I mean, 
They they they've got fifty seven points. Game in hand, of course. Hull have got game in hand, but. I think with Norwich, they'll, they'll happily sit and say that, you know what, even if Hall and Coventry do win their games, then, you know, they have got the goal difference to prove um, they can stay there and cement that place there. Um, they are free scoring goals at the minute, um, Norwich, you know. Um, they look a team who, um, a team who, you know, they don't look like stopping in front of goal at this minute in time. Um you look at Preston, 56 points. Middlesbrough picked up a bit of runner form at the Martin, uh, mm. 54 points. I mean, then you go down to the bottom end of the table, Martin. I mean, you look at Rotherham. I think Rotherham, you know, to, respectively, talking to some Rotherham fans who we know, they say that, you know, they're planning on League One for next season now. Sheffield yeah. Wednesday are still in it, Martin, aren't they? 38 points, yeah. 39 mm-hmm. Huddersfield, 39 Birmingham. Um, QPR, 40, 41 for Plymouth and Stoke. Um, and then you look at 43 for Millwall, 42 for Blackburn. I mean, where do you see it with the relegation battle, Martin? I mean, how crucial of a period now is it in the business end of the season? Because... All of these teams are well. You'd say some of them are going to be playing each other quite, quite soon. Yeah, it's almost impossible to call. I've been looking at it again today. I've been looking at the forms and and sort of the feeling around each club. You know that I, I said on this show a little while ago, and I, I got shot down by a few Plymouth fans. I, I love them as a club, and I think it's a club that will they probably just do it. But they're they're really getting sucked into this relegation dogfight, aren't they? You know, up to you would say up to seventeenth. Mm. downwards they're all it they're all in it Millwall I think could be fine they've turned the corner with Neil Harris in charge uh he's done a really good job really good points return we, we, we'll come on to that when we do their their, their game in a, in, a, in a short while but they've, 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 he's done a really good job there Eustace has to get Blackburn rolling quickly but I think Smodic might just have enough for them he might just get the goals because game's going to be tight back end of the season and he's likely to snatch a goal one or you know it snatch a goal here and win a go win a game one nil. I think Smodic will be the difference between Blackburn going down and not going down. I think that they they're just about survive for me. Gary Rowett's gone into to to Birmingham, who've got a massive game on Good Friday. They take on QPR, don't they? In a in a massive yep. game at Loftus Road. So it's a game they have to win. Rowett knows the club well. He just needs to steer them to safety. But I was looking at their points return. Um, for the season so far, if they continue how they're going, 0.8 uh, is their points per game at the moment. It would see them go down if they keep on the same trajectory and continue with the, picking up the you know, the same average. They will get relegated, so they're going to have to they're going to have to sort it out really quickly there. Um, Gary Rowett's probably the man to do it. Good call by them, but they've gone through some managers there this season, haven't they? Dear me, um, great football club, but it'd be um, be unbelievable to see see Birmingham get relegated. Yeah, it's 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 been it's been quite tight, isn't it, when you look at the relegation battle. I mean, Sheffield Wednesday, mm. I mean, home form's gonna be key for them in this sort of battle and picking up the points there. They look mm. better, far better at home. Um Birmingham, they're kind of in a bit of a sticky patch, aren't they? You know, where where are the points gonna come from? Can Gary Rowett turn it around there? Um I mean Neil Harris has gone in at Millwall and he looks like he's t- really turned turned them around in their fortunes, Millwall. Blackburn, I mean, they seem to be struggling for points. Um, Plymouth, I mean, they're, they're no manager even, do, even doesn't seem to be getting them going, does he, Martin, since uh, Stephen Schumacher left? Yeah. He's lost the fan base already, you know. It, their form since he came in, like, it didn't start too bad under him, did they? But... They're really struggling. Um, they're highly reliant, weren't they, on on Hardy and Whitaker? They've yeah. stopped scoring the pair of them because I looked at it this morning. Hardy's only got one in eight, and Whitaker's only got one in seven, and they just don't keep clean sheets, do they, at the moment? And that and that would be the fear with Plymouth. I hope they stay up because it, it's a decent football club. I, I really like them, but um, they miss Ayaz that that went on to Middlesbrough. He's a good player for them, wasn't he? Um, yeah. But there's a, so much negativity around their new manager. Yes, it's, it's true. Um, Martin, let's get on to week 39 of the championship predictions then. Good Easter Easter weekend, good Friday. Will it be a mm. good Friday for some of the clubs in the championship um, who obviously want to 
scaver away from relegation or make the playoffs or even get promoted to the Premier League in the automatic spots. But we're going to go on to our first game, Bristol City versus Leicester. This is the first game, Martin, of the of the um, Good Friday fixtures. Um, Bristol City, I mean... They've hit a bit of a slump, haven't they, Martin? I believe they've lost, is it, they haven't won in the last five out of six in this one. Um, mm. But then you look at Leicester, I mean, you know, Leicester's hit a bit of a bump, haven't they, Martin, in regards to results? Yeah, five defeats in the last six of Bristol City, the 14th, and not out of the relegation dogfight yet. You'd say they're just about safe. And in any other season, they would have had enough points to, to be safe by now. Um yeah, zero points though, Jack, um, against uh, opposition beginning this round in the top three. Uh, they've lost five. Um, yeah. So I think it is, it's a game that Leicester should win. It's a perfect game for them to try and bounce back in. Not an easy place to go to, as Southampton found out earlier on the season. Uh, you, Leicester just four points from the last 15 available. They've won one, drawn one, lost three. You didn't really see that coming. I didn't see that coming. I don't know about you, mate. Um, little bit of a shock, but need to keep Tommy Conway quiet, I would say, on this one Friday. He enjoyed a productive international break. I was looking how he did. He assisted for Scotland under 21s, um, and he also scored Jack in their games. Um, and he scored, uh, he scored a few for Bristol City this season. He's probably like their, their key man. Whenever we talk to talk to our mate, um, from, from down at Bristol City on TikTok, he always pretty much says the same, doesn't he? Um, that he's their, he's their key man. But, yeah, uh, looking at it, Jamie Vardy, he, he's in a bit of form, isn't he? He yeah. scored in the reverse fixture, actually. I'm just looking, he scored in the reverse fixture of this game. So, yeah, you would, um, you know, as a Leicester fan, you'd be hoping that he can keep his form going. But I do, I do expect Leicester to bounce back and win this one, Jack, to be quite honest. Yeah, Leicester's got to pick up the form, Martin. You know, nine games remaining in the race back to the Premier League. Um, Bristol City, no easy opponents at Ashton Gate, let's be honest. I mean, you look at what they did to Southampton to end their unbeaten run. Um, Leicester, you know, we've just got to be more clinical and we can't be going to be complacent to this game at all. Some would say the international break come good for Leicester with the form that they was on, the little bump that they've had. Um, but I think Kenzo Mareska's men will go to Ashton Gate on um, Friday and turn their form around and win. Um, I'm going to go for a four-goal conclusion in this one, Martin. I'm going to go 3-1 to the Foxes. Yeah, I think you'll win it. I'm going to go 1-0. I'm going to go with a 1-0 win. Less, I just, yeah. yeah, I'm going to go 1-0. Are you going to write this down so you've got it for your predict? Yeah, your I'm writing it. I'm writing it down, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I'm going to go 1-0 Leicester in this one. 1-0 Leicester, yeah. Um, let's have a look what everyone else is saying. Uh, Danny's gone 2-1 to Bristol. He's obviously a Leeds fan. He, he wants Leicester to slip up as much as possible. Uh, Kayson's gone 0-0. Ryan's gone 3-0 Leicester. Da David is gone 2-0 uh, as well. Kyle's gone 2-0. Um, Eddie's gone 3-1. Uh, we then move on to the Den Martin. Millwall mm. versus West Brom. Um, West Brom, you know... They're in a real good position for the playoff spots at the minute, uh, sitting in fifth place. The Tech on the Millwall side have really turned their fortunes around, like I say, under uh, Neil Harris. I mean, how tricky of a game this one is, this one for the Baggies going to a new, really? you'd say, mm. more improved Millwall side. Yeah, Millwall, since Harris has been brought in, he, they've collected 10 points, Jack, from a possible 15 since mm. he took over as manager. It was a masterstroke by the board there. Um, obviously, that run included that 2-1 victory down at Southampton. It's lifted them four points clear of the drop zone ahead of this Easter weekend. And Millwall have avoided defeat in their last five meetings with the Baggies. They've won two and drawn three. And also, another little statistic for you on this one, playing on Good Friday appears to be a lucky charm for Millwall, who haven't lost any of their last nine league matches contested on Good Friday, they've won five and drawn four. And for that reason, Jack, I'm going to go with Millwall and upset in this because there will be upsets this this Friday. I think yeah. Millwall will win this game. What score are you going for this one, Martin? I'm going to go 2-1 Millwall. 
Two one Millwall. I tell you what, five wins and four draws on Good Friday. I mean, you mm. know, can they go beaten in ten? Um, and West Brom, West... get this. The, so the other statistic for you when you're making your prediction, yeah. West Brom and Albion are on a twenty match winless away run on Good Friday. They've drawn six and lost fourteen on Good Friday. Whether that plays any part of this, uh, probably not. But um, yeah, who knows? I tell you, I'm going one one. I'm going a one one mm. draw. Uh, the hot yeah, stat, Jack Millwall have picked up a league high also of eighty nine yellow cards this season. They've picked up more than anybody else. I'm not surprised when I watched them at St Mary's. Boy, they commit yeah. a lot of fouls, but they, they, they like work to get so stuck hard, in, don't they? Yeah, they do. They like, they like, they really like to battle. This is what Millwall are there for, isn't it? They're a real battling side with, you know, you know, and uh, yeah, I think, like I say, form's got to turn it turn itself round, and it for West Brom on Good Friday, of course. But uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna go one one. Um, I think a 1-1 one, one draw. I mean, last time I believe West Brom went to London was when they played QPR. And they drew mm-hmm. two two, so yeah, I'm gonna go one one, Martin. I'm gonna play the safe bet with the a uh, one one draw. Mm. Um, next one is the Cardiff City Stadium, Cardiff versus Sunderland, a Sunderland side who are really struggling. Martin Cardiff have picked up, mm. haven't they? Um, in the last few weeks, despite defeat to local rival Swansea City, but. How do you see the Bluebirds taking on the Black Cats in this one? Which way do you think it will go? Oh, yeah, they're in some quite good form, aren't they, before that defeat to Swansea? that They won the mm. previous four games. Um, so they're in some good form. But the manager, um, he was not happy with the result. He, he accused a lot of his players of hiding um, in that game. They, they just didn't perform against Swansea at all. They just didn't turn up for it. But they're really going to need to push now. If they want to give themselves a, a promotion, pu- uh, you know, a playoff push, because they, you know, they're still within touch and distance of it. They're going to have to go some now. But um, it's a funny game. I see it got it's got a draw written all over it for me. Um, Mike, Do- Mike Dodds is still in caretaker charge of Sunderland. Uh, he's still looking for his first win. They've drawn one, lost four since he come in. Um, Job Bellingham is Sunderland's only available player with more than five goals this season to his name. Four of his six strikes this term have arrived after half time. He'd be a key man for them uh, in this one. I do, do you know what? Thinking about looking at the injuries that Sunderland have, Jack Clark still out injured. Mm. Um, be, be interested if he actually kicks the ball for Sunderland again. I'm going to go with a Cardiff win. I'm going to go with a 2 0 2 1 Cardiff win in this one, Jack. I'll tell you what, Martin, I'm going to back you on that one. I'll go 2 1 as well. 2 1. With the, with the injuries that Sunderland's got and that missing real key players, um, Cardiff, you know, they want to. They want vengeance, won't they? After losing that uh, all-important derby before the international break, they want to. He'll want a response. Uh, Errol Bullock from his men, and I think you'll get one. Um, they're playing the Sunderland side. We're not on the greatest of form at all going into this game, and uh, yeah, they've really struggled to pick up points, haven't they? So yeah, I'm going to go mm. two-one Cardiff. Um, next one, we're going to go to the John Smith Stadium, Huddersfield Town versus Coventry City. Um, Huddersfield sit in 22nd, Coventry, I mean, they're not many points out from Norwich, who's sitting sixth in the playoffs. Um, how do you see this one going between Huddersfield and Coventry? I mean, both sides are fighting for two different things at the side. Mm. Both ends of the table, Huddersfield wanting to stay up. Um, obviously on the same points in Birmingham. Coventry, I mean, a three points here could really put pressure on Norwich um, and Hull with obviously um, Easter weekend being played with like two games and that. Um, so how do you see them getting on it, the John Smiths, Martin, um, Coventry? I've got a feeling that Huddersfield will get relegated, to be quite honest. Um, they halted the two-game losing run with that nil-nil draw before the international break. Um, three points to 17th place um, Blackburn at the moment. Um, they haven't lost on Good Friday since 1987, though, Huddersfield. 
That was a statistic that I saw today. Ready, um, oh. But they're searching for their first home win, though, in four games. They've drawn one, lost two. It's certainly not um, a fortress, the John Smiths, that's for sure. Coventry City, though, they'll be boy. And we have to give them a massive shout out for what they did in the FA Cup the other week. I think any fan of the championship other than probably Leicester um, would be pretty delighted <laughs> for them. I, I, I think they, um, I'm, I, I'm pleased for them. They play the, they play, they play in, a, in an FA Cup semi-final. It's the first time that they've played an FA Cup semi-final since 1987. Last time yes. they did that, they went on and won it, Jack. Um, I think any, any fan of the championship would love to see him go on and beat Man United and go on and get to the FA Cup final. Um, four points off the top six. They've got a game in hand on West Bromwich, Albion and Hull, who are above them, heading into this weekend fixtures. Mark Robbins' men are on a three-match winning run. Uh, I fancy them in this one, I've got to be honest. Hadji Wright, I do like Hadji Wright. He started to really come into his own as the season's gone, I think. I think he started the season, he, I think we looked at the statistics at the time, and he missed more chances than any, any other striker, but he's a raw striker. He's getting better and better. I really fancy them in, in, in this one. I'm going to go with a... With a I think Ryan Scott was in the chat, and I see it pop up um, in the chat. He said 3-1 Coventry, and I'm going to back Ryan Scott, who's in the chat, with a 3-1 win to Coventry. Yeah, I'm going to back Coventry as well. 3-1. Um, yeah, I think Coventry have got enough in the, in the tank to really um, push on with the play, with the uh, battle for the playoff spots. Yeah. Um, you know, Huddersfield won't be it won't be easy, will they? I mean, they did um pick up a point against Leeds, didn't they? Um Huddersfield. So, you know, they, they have picked up points against sides who's in the top eight, um, uh, top nine. So I think Huddersfield will score, but I think Coventry win it three goals to one for me. Um, I think um, Ellis Sims will uh, uh, score quite a few in my opinion. I mean he I seems really to be like on quite him. a bit of form as well. Great. He's a great player, isn't he? He looks he looks the real deal, doesn't he? Mm. Um, Martin, next one. Hull City versus um, Stoke City. I mean, going into this game, four consecutive draws for Hull in the league at home. Um, yeah. How do you see it going against a, a struggling Stoke City side? They're just they're not winning games like they were, are they? Like you say, four con- consecutive draw. Draws it. They've lost a little bit of ground on those playoff places, haven't they? Um, but they they're still just one defeat in ten games, so they're not getting beat mm-hmm. loads. Uh, three of the four draws uh, for Racine's side have been involved um, in the last month. Have all come on home soil as well, and that's where you think they're going to have to start winning games at home. Perfect opportunity against the Stoke City side that are fighting relegation. It won't be easy though. Stoke have won just four of their thirty nine league games held on Good Friday. So they have the greatest record on Good Friday. Um, they have a good uh, track record in away head-to-heads, though, against Hull City. They've won their previous two, and Schumacher Sider got a two-point cushion to the relegation zone. Um, but they're going to need to turn things around, Stoke, because they could still get sucked into it. I'm not convinced they go down. Eight defeats from their last 11 matches, though, Jack. Stoke City has not been the greatest of seasons, has it? And Schumacher's nope. not really been able to turn it around. Quite surprised because I thought that he would. Yeah, so Stoke side is really shipping goals, aren't they? I mean, you know, they did against mm. Norwich. They have done against Leicester this season. Five goals there. The um, things don't seem to be improving, do they, uh, for Stoke? Um, as they look down the barrel of the relegation battle and uh, Hall, I mean, Philogene, you know, he, they'll be hoping he'll be key in this game. I mean, he's had a successful international break, hasn't he, with the England under 21s? Um, big talk about him. Um, okay. Carvalho as well, another one who will really show up in this game. I think Stoke will lose this one, two goals to Nelly against Hull. No, I think um, yeah, I, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to back you, mate. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to go with Hull. I'm going to go 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 two nil Hull. Yeah, I think Hull have enough to beat Stoke. To be honest, yeah, I mean, they Stoke... do. Definitely. Stoke are in trouble. And, you know, Schumacher doesn't seem to know how to turn it around. It's kind of like, you know, what do you do? Um, they seem like a bit, a, dis- a bit of disarray, don't they, Martin, you know? They seem uh, mm. one of them sides this season who 
if you get the first goal against them, the, the head's kind of dropping it. And then, you know, and then if you score another, it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like, how do you get back into this game? Um, and I think that's something Stokes done this season quite often where the heads have dropped in games and then it's, it just gets from, it gets, it gets worse from doing it in games where they're getting um, shipping goals quite, quite a lot. Um, and that's something they'll obviously look to stop against Hall, but I think Hall win it for me. Um, next one, Martin in form Norwich. Um, a Norwich side who haven't lost um, at home in the league since November, and that was against Blackburn. Um, Norwich, though, are 11 games unbeaten in the league at home going into this game. A side who are really flamboyant, aren't they, Martin? Really scoring goals for fun at the minute, you'd say, Norwich City. And uh, they're going stride for stride in um, cementing their places in the playoffs. Um how do you see them taking on Plymouth? I mean, Plymouth are not in the greatest of form going into this game. No, it was. Um, it was. I was looking back at the reverse fixture, Jack, and it was that shock result when Plymouth mm. under Stephen Schumacher at the time they beat them six two, didn't they? It was one yeah. of the biggest shocks of the season. That result, but much has changed since then. That was back in September. Norwich have really kicked on. Obviously, Plymouth have lost Schumacher. Like we said at the top of the show, Ian Foster is under mounting pressure there. Uh, he was unbeaten in his first five games, Ian Foster, as a manager of Plymouth. But since then, they've uh, won just one of their last 10 league outings. And that's why they find themselves where they are. Um, they've managed just one goal from their last four league matches, which is a major, major issue. And they failed to register, Jack, a single shot on target against Plymouth, against Preston, did Plymouth in the last game. And the fans were absolutely furious. Um I think Gabriel Sara will be the man to stop because he's mm. he's he's in really good form, Sara, at the moment. He uh, I was looking at his statistics earlier. He scored three, assisted in two in his last five league games. He is a star man, isn't he? What a good young young talent he's going to be. Norwich though looking to win seven straight con um, consecutive championship home games for the first time since a run of nine consecutive victories back in November two thousand and three. So. I fancy them to go on and do that. I think they'll comfortably beat Plymouth here. I'm going to go with a Norwich 3-0 victory on Good Friday against Plymouth Argyle. Yeah, I'm, I'm going 3-0 as well. Um, I'll back you on that, Martin. 3-0 for me. Um, I think they'll have enough in the tank, Norwich. More than. I mean, they're, look, they're looking really good, aren't they, at the minute? And uh, there's just no stopping them at the minute. Um, you know, and... Um, yeah, I think they've really picked up again, aren't they? You know, they went on yeah. that little bit of a blip uh, before, but then they've picked up again. Uh, Wagner was under pressure mm. at one point, and then they've kind of like got gone on that amazing run again. And it's like, you know, they've got some big games coming up as well against um, local rivals, Ipswich and that, and East Anglia Derby and that Norwich uh, against Leicester as well. So, yeah, big games to come for them. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, I think the Plymouth game now, I think they'll, like I said, they'll win that quite comfortably, to be honest. Um, that's what Martin Preston versus um, Rotherham United. I mean, Rotherham, um, what can you say? They haven't won a game after Martin since Boxing Day last year. Um, Preston have really picked up, though, aren't the Martin in form? <laughs> um, Ryan Lowe, you know. He'll feel that his president side could have a big shout um, within the playoff um, argument. Um, how do you see them getting on it deep down, Martin, against Rotherham United? Yeah, Preston, they're well, they five points adrift of the top six at the moment. One defeat from their last nine matches are in some really good form. Um, I don't know, I fancy them to go on and win this. Rotherham failed to score in their last four league games. Um, they've not tasted victory on the road, like you said, in the championship since November 20, uh, 2022. Um, they've drawn 11, lost 21, five-match losing streak, and they've conceded 19 goals rather than in that time. It's dreadful form. I think Preston put a few past them. I'm going to go with a 4-0 Preston win, Jack, in this one. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm going 3 I'm going 3 nil Preston. Uh, you're going 4-0. Yeah, um, yeah. The shipping shipping goals like it's no one's business, isn't it? You know, 
Um, Rob from Olaka leaking top on the Martin, they need to be fixed. Um, they you do. know, but yeah, their defense is shipping goals. Um, Victor Johansson has probably been their best player this season, which is the goalkeeper. Um, but there's only so much you can keep out as a goalkeeper, aren't they? Out in that Martin, if the defense ain't mm. doing its job, then you're going to be shipping quite a few goals. Um, and that's obviously down to confidence as well. Um, you know, I think Liam Richardson, I think it's just about planning for League One, to be honest. Um, when you talk to Terry, you know, he t- he talks quite quite right about Rotherham, you know, the way that things have gone this season have not really gone great on the pitch. And, that. and uh, yeah, they've got games to play still, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not really games that you think, you know what, easy games to get points out of, you know, the the rock bottom in confidence is, it's on the floor, isn't it? Um, mm. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go 3-0. Um, next one, Martin, is Queen's Park Rangers versus Birmingham. Gary Rowett back in charge of the Blues. Um, in his second spell at the club, um, he's obviously taken over his interim um, how do you see them getting on against Queen's Park Rangers, Birmingham? Can Birmingham go and get something out of this game or will QPR yeah. have home advantage? I think new manager bounce says a lot, doesn't it? Though he's a temporary charge. Um, he's the sixth person to take charge of the club this season when he get, takes to the dugout at the weekend. Mark Venus, he had six games before Rower. He lost five of those uh, games, drawing one. Um, they're not in very good form, are they, at the moment, the Blues? But I wouldn't be surprised if they went and sneaked it. I kind of, in my head, says a draw. Uh, QPR don't score loads of goals. They've got a a championship joint low of 2.26 goals per match heading into this weekend's fixture. They don't score loads of goals. Birmingham not scoring loads of goals. Do you know what? I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw. Actually, I'm going to go with a 0-0 draw. It'd be no good for either side. Nil nil. No, no, I'm going to go. Don't often go for nil nils on the on this prediction show, Jack Jack, but I am gonna win this one. Yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go for a one one draw. I don't see many goals in the game to be fair. Uh both sides who really need the points. You can see it being a battling game. Birmingham, new manager bounce and that. With Gary Rowett, he'll want them to get off to a good start. Um with him taking over his interim boss, but yeah. Birmingham are in a bit of a pickle at the minute, aren't they? And they've really got to turn it turn it round mm. before it's too late. Um, with Huddersfield breathing down their necks as well on the same point. So, yeah, results are going to be key this weekend for whoever's um, fighting the relegation battle, Martin, um, you know. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting one in that QPR game. Um, let's have a look what everyone else is saying. Um, Asmir to score both. <laughs> I don't, I don't think Gasly has scored against... from his goal, has he? Till, since he played for Stoke Martin? No, just the only time against Arta Boric when he was uh, in goal for Southampton. Um, when Asmir was playing for Stoke, I mean, that's the only time he's ever scored. I've seen him come up for a few corners since, but that's the only <laughs> one. Paul, Paul Robinson, though, as a goalkeeper, scored, scored twice, actually. He scored two goals, but you never know. He's not got long left to get another goal, that's for sure. He's coming to the end of his career, you would say now, so... Fair enough. Um, Martin, Sheffield Wednesday versus Swansea. Mm. Home form's key for Sheffield Wednesday, but um, Swansea, I mean, you know, that, that big win over Cardiff is going to give them huge confidence going into this game. How yeah, do you see it going between How do you see, see it going between the two sides? I think it'd be an interesting game. Um, yeah, I just, I think, to be fair, with Wednesday... I'm not sure they're stuck. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, they're going to stay up. Um, but I don't think they've got a few injury issues. Bannon apparently struggling at the moment. He's their key man, isn't he? But that was a massive hammering, wasn't it? That was a massive hammer. And that 6 0 hammering against Ipswich would have, would, would have, would have dented confidence. Um, yeah, 23rd in the table. Uh, Swansea, good result for them. But before the international break, you say, like against their rivals. Um, but the Swans, uh, the Swans haven't been at their best over East, Easter, though. They've won just one of their last six Good Friday fixtures. And the hot stat from this one, only Sheffield Wednesday's last 11 matches 
have seen both teams score. So good chance that both teams are scoring this. I'm going to go with a 2-1 Swansea win. I'm going to go with a away win. I think Wednesday will go down. Yeah, I'll back you. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two one to Swansea as well. I just looked at um, the chat. Callum Lynch has said the same. I'm with you, Callum. I'm with you, mate. Yeah, two one for me as well. Martin, your 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 boys are next. Southampton oh, and Middlesbrough. I mean, mm. Borough seem to be so Borough seem to do well against the teams in the top ten, don't they, Martin? Um, they do. Southampton. I mean, they've got they've got two games in hand, of course. Um, yeah. Got to win games, though, aren't they, Martin, from now on? Easter's massive. It's massive. I mean, how how big of a game is this one against Borough? Huge. I think the two games over Easter are huge for Southampton. They to go to Ipswich, go to Portman Road on Monday. It's a six-pointer, that one, in my opinion. But eight points separate Southampton from the automatic places, as, as we know. Um, but, you know, just need to win the games in hand. Um, need to get back-to-back home wins again. We need to start, you know, obviously beat Sunderland. Pretty much three weeks ago since we played at home against Sunderland. It's been a while, but an opportunity for Russell Martin to get some players fit. Carl Walker-Peters is fit again. Ryan Fraser's back on the grass as well, which is really good news. David Brooks got brought off last night with illness. Not sure if he'll be available at the weekend. So we'll find a bit more out in Russell's press conference tomorrow. Borough in with a chance of, of the playoffs, but you wouldn't think so. He'd say they're almost on the beach, but not quite on the beach. Um, but they do, like you said, they do well against the top sides. Um, Good Friday, though, isn't a positive omen for Middlesbrough. They've mm-hmm. won just three of their last 34 historical away games played on this day of the year. They've drawn 11 and lost 20. Saints will need Adam Armstrong to keep, to keep scoring. He's been a key man. I looked at his statistics today. Uh, he's been involved in a league high of 29 league goals this season. He scored 18, assisted in 11. No player has scored more goals for Saints since Danny Ings did, 22 this is, um, in the in the 2019-20 season. So he's a bit of a hero down here on the south coast at the minute, Adam Armstrong. And he'd be a key man in the running, but they need to stop letting goals in Southampton. That's our biggest problem. Shoring up defence will be key. We've conceded at least twice in each of the last four home games. They've won two and we've lost two. That is going to be key for me. Yeah, uh, Middles were obviously beaten in the last four in the league. So, yeah, confidence is flying in, in that camp. Um, I think Southampton will nick this one just, Martin, 2-1. Uh, um, I think both teams will score. What's your, what's your thoughts on this one, Martin? I think Saints will win it. Um, I, well, yeah, but I think they let goals in. I don't think they. I still think we let goals in. I'm going to go with a three-two victory actually for Southampton. Three-two, interesting. Keep the trend of letting two goals in per game. That's what it seems to be what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, next one: struggling Blackburn uh, versus Ipswich. I mean, it's we'd have an upset have, in this one, wouldn't we? Oh. Ipswich have had a fine season, haven't they? Like, to say the least, you know, they deserve to be where they are because they've been outstanding this season. It's reached down. Um, the take on the Blackburn side who haven't won in the last eight in the league. Hmm. I mean, yeah, Smodix has been the only player I think scored for Blackburn um, in the last few games. And, 2024. Um, Ipswich, though, that 6 0 thrashing of Sheffield Wednesday. I mean, yeah, they're, they're going to be ready and up for a fight again, aren't they? Ipswich going to um, a very sort of Blackburn side who, yeah, the confidence isn't great at Ewood Park and uh, they look very vulnerable. Uh, He's Blackburn. winless, isn't he? Still, Eustace, John um, Eustace, still yet to win a league game. As as much as I'd as much as I'd like it switch to drop points, be a being a promotion rival and that, I think you I think you got a fancy it switching this on you, Martin. To yeah. be honest, I don't think you could go any way with it. Um, I'm gonna go three 0 Yeah, I, I I think it's a comfortable win for Ipswich. Ipswich last one on this ground came in January 1996. Kieran McKenna, the Ipswich manager, was just nine years old, Jack. With their last victory there. The Tractor Boys firmly in the mix, though, aren't they? You've got to say. They're well yeah. in the mix for the, for the top two, and they'll be delighted. 
Um, I think they go on and win this. Um, Blackburn, they haven't kept a cl uh, home clean sheet in 16 games for this. Um, Wes Burns, though, that I, I heard his injury is yeah, not old. bad. It's not as bad as they expected, but he's out for this one. I'm gonna, I'm going to go with a comfortable win for Ipswich. I'm going to go four nil Jack for this one. Yeah, it's, it's it's one of them. I don't think you can bet against it to be honest. And Ipswich side who looked really good this season, Martin. Um, you know, and I don't think you can bet against them. They've really started to strut the stuff in them. And this is now the business end of the season in seeing it through. Um, whether it's automatic promotion, whether it's the playoffs, you know, um, it remains to be seen with it. So it's yeah, 3 0 for me, uh, four for you. Um, last one, Martin, is Watford versus Leeds. Um, I mean, Leeds are in some fine form. Um, in their last 13 games in in the league, they have won 12, drawn one. Um, Leeds are in some real fine form. And, um, yeah, they look no stopping Leeds at the minute, Martin. Top of the league mm. on goal difference uh, with, a, with a game played more than Leicester. Um, but Leeds are cruising, aren't they? They might be without uh, Rutter this game due to, I think he had an operation on like a, I think it was his hernia or something. Uh, before the international break, during the international break, so they might be without him. Um, then you've got you've got key players like Somerville in this game, haven't you, Martin? You know, mm. but Watford, you know, I don't think they'll be pushovers. You know, I think Tom Cleverley he'll set his team up well against Leeds because you know he'll know how good of a side Leeds have been um, this season. So. I think Leeds have won 25 their last 29 games going into this one in the league. So, hmm. yeah, it's unbelievable form. They've really picked up, aren't they? And, um, yeah, I think they'll be in the automatic promotion for sure. But can Watford minimise Leeds' chances in this game? Because I think mostly, I think Watford will be defending most of the game, to be honest, and probably try and hit Leeds on the counter-attack as much as possible. But... Yeah, I think it'll be a battling game between the two sides, but I think Leeds win this one for me. Um, I'm going to go 2-0 Leeds. Interesting. Daniel Fark has never won at Vicarage Road, apparently. He's lost two. His only victory against Watford um, has been in the reverse fixture at Ellen Road. Yeah. Um, it's, a bit, it's a big game, Jack, isn't it, this one? Um, it's a massive game. It's not an easy place to go. I think cleverly, he's definitely got a bit of a bounce there. They've stopped their, their rut. But Daniel Fark has been there, seen it and done it. I said at the top of the show, I think he's the most experienced manager out, out of those top four. And I think you see them over the line. Will they win this one? They'll be an upset somewhere along the line and there'll be twists and turns along the way. But I, I don't see them them dropping points. I, I see everybody in the, in the top four winning at the weekend. And I think, I think that they will do. The only good thing for Leicester is that they play the game early in the day. Yeah. Puts a little bit of pressure on Leeds because... Leicester could leapfrog them and be back into. We, first we place just in need the to. Division. We just need to score more goals than what Leeds score on Friday. Yeah, just need to score goals. Um, <laughs> puts a bit of, it puts a bit of pressure on them. Um, this time last year, Watford lost at home to Huddersfield. They haven't suffered consecutive Good Friday defeats since 1988. Have Watford? I think they will do though this weekend. Um, but like Eric does say there on the screen. What for camp? They play the well. They play well against the top teams, don't they? Yeah, they do. Um, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going. I think it's going to be tight, but I'm going to go with a a two-one Leeds win. I think it'd be a narrow victory, though. Two-one Leeds, yeah. Yeah, I think they'll win, but I think it'd be tight. Yeah, I know. I know. Like um, Daniel Fox said, it's now the it's now the business end of the season, and uh, yeah. some massive games for Leeds coming up, like Hall and Coventry, and that you know. Leeds have just got to keep winning, um, yeah. you know, and um, yeah, it's going to be a it's going to be a fight to the finish in it. Whoever wins the championship, to be fair, mm. um, yeah, it's going to be a right battle. Um, but no, that is it of the championship predictions week thirty nine. Thank you to everybody who's got involved, um, guys. If you've enjoyed the stream of the championship predictions, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, if you're new to the channel. Um, go and check out Football Martin as well. Uh, Martin, give us a plug of your channel, mate. Let everybody know where to find you on the socials as well, pal. 
Yeah, I'm a fairly new content creator. I've only been doing it for this season, but um, you can find me over on YouTube at Football Martin. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, Southampton content predominantly, but we're we'll doing plenty of stuff during the Euros around England as well. TikTok, I joined Jack at the final whistle live a fair bit as well. We're always debating and talking about football, and I'll be I'll be I'll be live on and off all the time over the next couple of weeks. There's some massive games, 10 massive games remain for Southampton and I will be all over that. And if you're visiting St Mary's, um, give me a shout, DM me and, and come on my channel. I want to talk to as many fans as I possibly can from as many clubs as I can as well. So yeah, make sure you uh, drop me a follow. Cheers, well, two fights coming on. Thank you, Jack. The best, mate. Top man, thank you. That was Martin uh, from the Football Martin um, YouTube channel. Um, go check Football Martin out on TikTok and that. Does some great stuff if you're a Southampton fan watching and uh, you need a an, um, Southampton channel to follow or get get involved in content creating and that um, on TikTok and that and watch some Southampton content, then Martin's the man for you. Um Right, what's coming up on the final whistle? So we've got Bristol City versus Leicester City. Battle of the Cities at Ashton Gate on Friday. We have got the match preview um, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Um, join me for that for sure. Um, nine big games left for the Foxes. Can the Foxes go and deliver and get back to the Premier League? Um, a business end of the season now for the Foxes in the race for promotion. Uh, fingers crossed we can go and get the job done. Uh, but no, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Um, there'll be a match day vlog out on Friday as well um, for the Bristol City Leicester game. Um, Kyle, I'm guessing you'll be doing 40 predict 40. Yeah, we we 40 predictions. We either Saturday or Sunday. So join me for that. Um, yeah, keep your eyes peeled and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Have a good rest of the evening and keep it here at the final whistle. Good night. Hi, all. Thank you for watching the final whistle. If you enjoy all our content, please remember to smash a like, share and subscribe to the channel.